So if you think your lives are a freaking mess and they're never going to get better, you have got to listen to Natalie's story. So my guest is Natalie Simmons, and we met at a coffee, a networking coffee, a few weeks ago. And I absolutely, she became my instant friend. She is just, I think, I think you're phenomenal. And I was, I told you earlier before we started, I was thinking about your story and what we were talking about and how we connected for a couple of days, actually. It was, it was just not many people I meet that I have like a, I feel like I have an instant rapport and an instant friendship with, but I did with Natalie. Um, and Natalie works for State Farm. Um, and she was not always the young professional woman we see here now. Um, there was a long journey. And do you want to start telling us about that, Natalie? Sure. Thank you for having me. Oh, my By pleasure. By the way, I look up to you a lot. Oh. Um, I guess that probably the best place to start to kind of put things into perspective is the way that most of my life looked uh, is not really what you would imagine from is not really what you would imagine a my childhood to have looked, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was perfect. Mm-hmm. So your childhood was a happy childhood, and it was a you know oh all right so, yeah. And then what happened? Well, my parents were phenomenal. I yeah. mean, they were great. They did everything they could. And then um, I'm not saying I totally blame. W- you know, my, my, I would, I was going to end up that way regardless, Mm -hmm. the way that I ended up regardless. But, um, I, I, so I'm not totally blaming it on this, but things really started to go downhill for me when computers started getting really prevalent in the homes. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we had one of those computers that had the real big back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They used to be about that wide. Yeah. Yeah. Very heavy to pick up. Uh, Yeah. 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 Huge. And like the um, old t- like the old television sets. Yes, exactly. Really deep. I yes. remember I had them. Yeah. Exactly. So um I would spend when I was about it started around twelve or thirteen, I got one for my room mm-hmm. and for like Christmas or birthday or something. And I would spend uh hours mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. And just playing, you know, silly video games and mm-hmm. things like that. And and it wasn't um it wasn't, I started, it wasn't like that big of a deal, but I was playing the video games that the boys were playing and mm-hmm. like Starcraft or um, Diablo 3 or Diablo 2 was mm-hmm. one of the name of the video games. And I mean, I would spend upwards of like 12 hours on it. Wow. Wow. And 12 not hour, just. 12 hours a day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I would get home from whatever I was required to do that day, like school. Mm-hmm. And um, I am very quickly did not care about school anymore. And mm. I would sit in front of the computer screen from the time that I got home till the time it was time to go. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was pretty awful. Ugh. Um. Like I look back on it now and I don't even, my daughter is eight and I don't even let her play on cell phones. I don't mm-hmm. let her play on an iPad. She rarely gets to watch TV. If she wants to on Saturday or Sunday, she has to have read a certain amount first beforehand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But I forced her to go outside. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I, you know, the stuff that I was doing got really boring. And so I started looking up mm-hmm. other things that's available to anyone and everyone. And the thing is, is like, this was when that kind of it's, I'm not saying that the internet was young, but it being in the home was mm-hmm. young. Right. Right. right? And right. so, you can access far worse things than what I saw now, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And again, I, so I yeah. eventually slipped into some pretty heavy drug use and I'm not saying it, mm-hmm. it has the, the computer made me use drugs. Right. 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 Um, but the computer was my first method of, of comforting myself. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I, 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 it's not like I needed comforting. I think a lot of us, especially kids in my age and my generation, just got comforted so much that now we bristle with antagonism against any sort of discomfort Uh, and we want everybody to fix it for us. Yep. Yep. So really for you, you're saying in a way, the first addiction was to being on the computer, probably being online because it made you, it removed you from reality. Probably so. Yeah. Yeah, It did definitely do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did definitely do that. And that's what drugs and alcohol do too. So, yes. So it would be a natural progression. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. And so the drugs and alcohol, um, I mean, by seventh grade, I kind of stopped going to school. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there was a um, there was a a law. I think you and I had kind of talking about this briefly before that came mm-hmm. out the No Child Left Behind Act. Yeah, which I think was put in place by Clinton, but really enforced by Obama. And what right. that did for me unfortunately, was make it to where at the end of the semester when I would have a a 20 in a class, all the teacher would tell me to do was copy down definitions. Yeah. And then they would bring me up to a passing 70. Right. And that's how I made it from seventh grade. And I got a diploma that way. Mm -hmm. I didn't Mm -hmm. even go to school. Yeah. (laughs) Like I didn't even show up. Yeah. So um, in, in regards to my education, I'm a product of that. So but anyway, I mean, I, I, from, from that point, like eighth grade or so, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade in that area, um, did that become drugs were like yeah. first and foremost. Yeah. And I remember when I was about 15 was the first time that I realized I wasn't going to be able to stop. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I, I remember it very specifically. I remember exactly where I was standing, what I was holding. And the thought that crossed my mind was, I had been, um, I, I got caught at school mm-hmm. and my parents tested me on a nine panel drug and alcohol test mm-hmm. and I failed for every single drug that was on the panel. Wow. And so, like I said, they did everything they could. It's yeah. not like I had some sure. bad parents, Yeah. you know, it's yeah. not like I had this horrible mom or dad that beat me and raped me and all this mm-hmm. stuff that didn't right. happen. Right. None of that stuff happened until after I was using drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But they gave me 30 days to clean up my act and get everything out of my system. And every day of that 30 days from that point on, did I do everything I could to not be on drugs? Mm -hmm. And every Mm -hmm. single day I said, this is the last day. This is the last day. This is the last day. And I woke up and I couldn't not. Yeah. And it pretty much ended. I mean, I ended up in some, in some pretty rough situations. The first time I got sober, it took a couple of times. And the first time I really got sober, I was... I want to say 19, Mm -hmm. 18 or 19, Mm -hmm. 2012. Yeah. September 11th, 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was pulled out of an attic. Um, That's where we were living, me and my, uh, at the time, boyfriend. We were living in an attic and um, shooting heroin and drinking and really anything we could get our hands on. And uh, I mean, we were peeing in milk jugs on that we put on the corner of the room. Yeah sleeping on insulation. Yeah. It was this garage off the side of the house, not too far from here actually, which is weird. Wow. Um, a garage that's off the side of, of a house and, and, um, it was meant to be a mother-in-law suite, but it was just kind of abandoned. Mm. And so it was all broken down on the inside, no running water, no electricity. And it's the Mm. middle of September. So in Georgia, Mm. so we're talking like, I don't know, it's 95 outside. And then in an attic. So I was 18 or 19. Mm. And uh, I was about 90 pounds. Mm. I was was pulled out. And I, I, I had been to, at this point, 17, 18, 19, somewhere in that ballpark of rehabs, uh, mental institutions, psych mm-hmm. wards, yeah. detox centers. And um, I was kind of pulled out of there and uh, uh, put in there. And, and I, so I was about 90 pounds when they weighed me when I first went in. Mm-hmm. My eyes were bleeding. Like my tear ducts were bleeding. My ears were bleeding. It mm. wasn't good. And, uh, I got sober kind of, but you know, the thing about sobriety, if you, if you are as much of an alcoholic and an addict as I am, because mm-hmm. there are people who can just stop, mm-hmm. which doesn't mean you're alcoholic and addict just right. means you have a drinking problem or right. a drug problem. Right. And there are those people that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Right. So he pulled me out of the situation and laid out my life in front of me perfectly. Mm-hmm. Right. It was all managed perfectly. I had a place to go. I had clean clothes. Um, I had the ability to go back to school. I had all these things set up so that I would be successful. Yeah. But the problem wasn't gone because right. for a real alcoholic or a real addict, the problem isn't the alcohol or the drugs. The solution mm-hmm. is the alcohol and the drugs. Right. The problem is the problems me. inside. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so I eventually like what I did since I didn't have drugs and alcohol anymore. And I also didn't have another solution was I reached out to anything and everything to make me comfortable. Mm -hmm. I reached out to food. I reached out to men, Mm -hmm. you know, sex. I reached out to, uh, 
spending money. Mm-hmm. I be, I worked four jobs at one time, just these things that are wildly unmanageable. Yeah. And of course, after a while, I'll tell you something about all that stuff. It may comfort you for a little bit, but you know, three or four gallons of ice cream in a week doesn't feel as good as heroin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel as good as a couple of shots of tequila. Yeah. So eventually it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And so I would drink again. Yeah. And it got pretty bad again very, very quickly. Mm. And um, I uh, ended up having my daughter throughout this time period. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't necessarily sober while pregnant. Also Mm -hmm. a whole other story. Mm -hmm. I was on maintenance medication that people who are trying to not, but it it can still get you high. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like methadone or? That um, kind of thing. Yeah. But not as bad. Methadone is like the worst. The worst, right. Um, I was on uh, Suboxone. Mm -hmm. I was on it. Um, like the smallest dose that you could take, I cut into sixteenths Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's still, when I would try not to take it, would put me into labor. But because of the situation, we didn't go to the hospital for that. We just Mm -hmm. decided to, there's a lot more to that. Um, we can talk together about that later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I ended up having her and, um, there, again, there's a lot more to it. She Mm -hmm. was okay. Her dad left, uh, about, about, about two months old. Mm-hmm. And I got sober again, but mm-hmm. I repeated the same thing. I finally got sober for good and for all February 8th of 2017. Mm-hmm. So she okay. was, she had just turned two. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I got sober, I had my, I think I told you about this. My, my sponsor called me and, uh, this is, this is how I actually ended up getting into insurance. Mm-hmm. It, he called me and he's like, you know, you feel worthless because you are. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whoa. Thanks. (laughs) Someone just told me something that I feel like everyone has purposely evaded, a Mm -hmm. truth that everyone has purposely evaded because Mm -hmm. they didn't want to break my heart. Right, right. They wanted to comfort me. I don't want to hurt her. Yeah. Boy, was I hurt. Yeah. And I am so very grateful for that moment. He said, you feel worthless because you are, mm-hmm. but why don't you do something worthwhile? Mm-hmm. And then perhaps you won't feel so worthless. Mm-hmm. And it was an unbelievably mind blowing change for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the cliche tough love, but it really is tough love. And it's it sometimes, um, we spoke about this, uh, when we, when we were having our coffee, uh, when you just make things easier for people and easier, they slip, they don't stay in the same place. They slip back into really bad places that you have to be uncomfortable. You have to be a little tough on yourself. And it's great when you're around people that are tough on you too, because being easy on people is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. When what I learned, because this time I took that discomfort that someone gave me and I ran with it instead of doing everything I could to avoid the mm-hmm. discomfort, to mm-hmm. comfort myself. Yeah. He always said, sit in the uncomfortableness of it. Mm-hmm. Sit there in the uncomfortable. Stop trying to take away your feelings. Yeah. Feel yeah. it. It sucks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like you're gonna, you're not gonna die and you're not gonna get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And that's probably two worst things that could happen right now, right? Yeah. And that's not gonna happen. You're just gonna feel the pain mm-hmm. and it's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. And so what I learned throughout this process, especially over the first year, and, and now that I work with people too, I, I do this for a lot of people all the time. Mm-hmm. It might as well be a, a second full-time job. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking every single day for mm-hmm. six years have I been working with women and men yeah. trying to help do the same thing for him that was done or them that was done for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and what what I learned is that when I am saying to someone what's going to make them comfortable, all I'm doing is selfishly comforting myself right? because I don't want right. to be honest because it, 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 it hurts to be honest as much as it hurts the person that's getting the truth. Mm-hmm. And so doing that for myself yeah. is a disservice for me and it's a disservice for you. Mm-hmm. And so I, I honestly believe that the only reason that I've been able to put together any sort of time mm-hmm. is because when given the opportunity to act out in comfort, mm-hmm. I avoid that. Yeah. And I do the uncomfortable action, which isn't so uncomfortable anymore. Mm-hmm. It used to be absolutely earth shattering mm-hmm. to me to do, to act out on integrity. It mm-hmm. used to be earth shattering for me to 
actually implement courage mm -hmm. or honesty yeah. and honesty about how I feel. Like I would say, I, I began to say the embarrassing things that I was feeling. Like I'm jealous of this, mm -hmm. or I feel like people don't like me, you know, this stuff that I wouldn't say before because I was embarrassed to say it. I don't right. want you to think that I worry about what you think, Right. you right. know? Right. And I think that it just being authentic now and being authentic means not laughing when you don't think something's funny because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we do that a lot. We're like, ha ha ha, but oh, we don't really yeah. think it's funny. Guilty. <laughs> or get, or get angry mm -hmm. when we're not really mad about that. Right. So just let it go because you want people to see how angry you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So being authentic. Yes. Being true yeah. to yourself and true to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is terrific. You just said something a minute ago that was just wonderful. Um, you are at this point then when you're getting the, your final time where you've been clean since what, mid twenties, your mid twenties. Well, I was about 24. Okay. Cause my birthday's in a couple in like a day or two oh. and I'll be 31. Happy birthday. Thank you. Nice. 31. God, I'd love to be 31 again. I'm so happy to be 31. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't think nobody thought I was going to live past 24. Yeah. I had a period, a, a, a year or so period where that same boyfriend, where what we would do every single, literally every single day is do a shot of heroin, him first, and then me wake him up from it as he overdoses and almost dies and banging him on the chest and putting hot water, or cold water on his face so that I could do a shot of it and he'd be able to wake me up. Uh, we would just constantly die. Yeah. And at yeah. this point, like my body is in, spent a couple of years sober and massive pain until I switched the way I was eating. I told you about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beef, right. salt, and water, baby. <laughs> right. Carnivore diet. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, well, my wife and I have increased our meat, you know, and Good. decreased a lot of the, the, you know, the fruit is almost gone. Carbs are almost gone Good. at this point. But uh, I told her when we met, I said, she's on the carnivore diet. And she goes, oh, like Jordan Peterson. I said, that's, I said, that's exactly what I said to her when she said it, like Jordan Peterson. And I got it from Michaela, his daughter. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. I thought I said, it was crazy. It's still crazy. And she knew that too. I said to her, I said, she said about getting it from the daughter. She goes, yeah, the daughter's name is uh, Michaela. You know, I was like, wow. So yeah, I, I eventually, I mean, I love meat. I, I'd be fine with it, but I, I kind of still like salads. <laughs> I love me. We call it a big A salad. Mm -hmm. Big A, yes. And it's like, I love a big, it's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Plus another addiction of mine was sugar. Right. So right. it's not, it's not easy, but the way that my body reacts to it just is awful. Yeah. It's yeah. awful. I don't feel like working. I don't feel like doing anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to, so. to sugar and carbs and all of that. That's even what, lettuce. Even lettuce. Once okay. you remove it and then you try to add it back, you see what it had been doing mm. all before. Wow. Now I know a lot of people don't have an issue with lettuce, right? but I ended up having that. You did. Yeah. yeah. You gotcha. find all these things that affect you in a way that you didn't know because you were taking all of the other stuff in at once, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Ooh, that's a, that's a four hour conversation. <laughs> You're not kidding. Well, we're going to, well, I'm going to cut here because we're going to have part two to this. This is the end of part one because, uh, and we were just going to have part one, but I am as always enjoying so much speaking with Natalie. So we'll see you for part two.